Hello, welcome to lab two. I hope by now you have uh, completed the report on lab one and have submitted that in the box for assignment, labs and everything together. All right, in lab two, we will discuss the concept of average speed and measure the average speed of a moving object. For that purpose, we are going to use an instrument and apparatus called a ticker timer. Now, what does it do? <clears throat> I can make this timer tick 40 times a second. Look at this. It is ticking 40 times a second. That means if I thread a paper tape under the carbon disc and pull it by making it move it will make 40 dots on the piece of paper all right let's uh, let's try it in the second paragraph i have asked you to cut a piece of tape and thread it under the carbon well i'm going to do it for you and then you will take the measurements is that right Okay, let's first of all cut a piece of tape. Now, this is the, the roll of tape, and I'm going to cut a piece from there. There you are. And I'm going to thread it through. Thread it under the carbon. All right. so that you can pull it out from the other side there you got i have threaded it and i can pull it out and now turn the timer on it's ticking 40 times a second and you can see it has actually produced the dots well do you believe me that the dots are there can you see the dots? Well, take a close look at it. These are the dots produced. And how many dots are produced in one second? Well, there are 40 dots in one second. Now tell me, therefore, what is the time taken? <clears throat> Suppose I pick two of those dots. Now, there are 40 such dots produced in one second. Tell me, what is the time interval that corresponds to? Or, what is the time taken by the paper strip to move through this much of distance? If I want to call that delta x, the time taken for that will be 1 40th of a second. Is that right? Delta T will be 1 over 40 of a second. That will be 0 0.025 second. So each interval, an interval is the distance between two dots, is traveled by the paper in a time 0 0.025 seconds. All right, let's look at activity one. I hope you have the printed lab with you. If you don't have it, please stop it now and go and get a printed copy because I'm not going to pull it on the board. I'm going to ask you to keep this with you and I'm going to go through the various steps of the lab. Activity one says cut about one meter length of the tape and slide one end under the timer and turn the timer on and pull it through the timer. I just did that and I have the dots produced. All right, and it says cut off the first few dots. Can you tell me why I need to cut off the first few dots? If you look at this, look at the first few dots over here. This is the first few dots. Now, why do you need to cut off the first few dots? I'm not going to answer that. I'm going to ask you to answer it. In fact, I have a question you need to answer there. 
So cut off the first few dots and then count 10 dots and cut off a piece. So <clears throat> what I'm what I have asked you to do is well I end up doing uh, these things for you. Cut off the first few and then count 10 starting well when you count 10 and cut off. Now what does that distance represent? This distance represent the distance traveled in what time? There are 10 intervals. Each interval, each, each time interval is 0 0.025 seconds. Therefore, 10 time intervals is, multiply this by 10, 0.25 seconds. This is the distance traveled by the paper in a time of 0.25 seconds. All right, I have asked you to cut three pieces like this. All right, and then what is it that you're supposed to be doing? Measure the length of these strips. Measure the length of strip one, strip two, strip three. And I'm going to ask you to do that. And in order that you may do it, I have actually cut these strips and I have made it available for you. And here they are. I'm going to adjust the camera so that you can see them. All right. What I would like you to do is use your ruler. You remember I had asked you to buy a ruler? Use your ruler to measure the length of this right on your screen. You can do that. Right on your screen, measure the length of this. In fact, in order to do that, you need to stop or pause the video. So pause the video and measure the length of the first strip, measure the length of the second strip, and measure the length of the third strip. Now, do not write it on the paper yet. Keep a note of those lengths because the, measure, the length you have measured is not the actual length. I want you to convert your measurements to the actual length. Now, how will you do that? I'm going to show that to you. Now, I measure the actual length of strip one, and I'm going to give it to you. The actual length of strip one, I'm going to write it, strip one delta x. Delta x is the length of strip one. So, I think I have uh, written it, uh, well, over here, for strip 1, delta x equal to 13 centimeter. Always remember to use meter. So, strip 1, actual length is 0.13 meter. Now, what is your measured length? Suppose your measured length is, let's say, uh, 7 centimeter. This is your measured length. You need to convert that to the actual length. Now that means you need to work out a conversion factor. What is the conversion factor? The conversion factor is the actual length divided by your measured length will be 13 centimeter divided by 7 centimeter. This is the conversion factor. Get a value and keep it with you. That means if you now multiply your measured value with this conversion factor, you will get the actual length of the strip. I hope you understand that. Now, in all the experiments that we do, you need to work out this conversion factor. All right? I will give you one actual value. Use that actual value with the corresponding measured value to obtain the conversion factor. 
13 divided by 7. Give me a decimal value of 13 divided by 7. It is approximately 1.86. So, if you now multiply your measured length of strip 2 with 1.86, you get the actual length of strip 2. Similarly, if you multiply the measured value of strip 3 by 1.86, you get the actual value of the length of strip 3. So, measure lengths of strip 1, strip 2, and strip 3. And now, answer the questions. Now, what are the questions you need to answer? I want to go through some of those. Why do you think it necessary to cut off the first few dots? I'm going to ask you to find a good answer for that. If 40 dots are made in one second, what is the time taken for 10 dots? Well, we talked about that. All right, I'm going to leave that for you. If the length of strip 1 is L1, then the paper travels a distance delta x equal to L1 in that time interval of delta t. What is that time interval of delta t? The time taken for 10 dots, it is 0.25 seconds. So L1 is delta x for strip 1 and this is your delta t. Now, what is the speed of motion of strip 1? What is the definition of average speed? Well, I'm going to call the speed as V. So, V bar, what does that stand for? Average speed. Average speed is delta X divided by delta T. Now, find the average speed of each of the three strips. Delta X will be the length of each strip, and delta T for each strip is the same, namely 0.25 seconds. So, the question, you can answer those questions. What is the speed of strip 2? What is the speed of strip 3? And what is the average speed with which you pull the paper? Well, if each of these, let's call it V1 bar, V2 bar will be delta X. Now, that will be L1 divided by delta T. That is your first trip. I think I'm writing too much to... So, your V1 bar, the average velocity of the first trip will be... L1 divided by delta T. Delta T is what? 0.25 seconds. And V2 bar is L2 divided by delta T. V3 bar will be L3 divided by delta T. And now, therefore, what is the average speed of motion of the entire strip? Will be V1 bar plus V2 bar, plus V3 bar, all over 3. And that will give you V bar, the average speed of the strip. Okay. And then, use your own words to define average speed of a moving object. Alright. Now, that's activity 1. Let's now go to activity two. What does that ask you? Cut about 1.5 length of tape and thread one end of it through the timer and attach the other end to a trolley. Here I have a trolley and I have a track where the trolley can move. Let me see if I can show you that track. I have now cut a length of tape as I showed you, and I attached it to the trolley, and I'm going to keep it on the track, and I can let the trolley move. And I'm going to thread this paper through the ticker timer. You can see the ticker timer here. I'm going to thread it through the timer. 
All right, there it goes. I want to get it out. I have now the paper threaded. I'm going to turn on the timer and give the trolley a gentle push. There you go. And now I collect the tape. All right, here's the tape. And you can see the dots on the tape, can't you? All right. Now, what are we supposed to do? Cut 10 strips of tape with 10 intervals. So, I'm going to now cut these into 10 strips. I'm going to count the first 10 and make my first strip. The next 10, I'm going to make my second strip and so on. And I'm going to cut them and paste them onto the board so that you can take the measurement. All right, here I have the 10 strips of paper. What I would like you to do is use your ruler now to measure the lengths of each of these. Strip 1, measure the length. Strip 2, strip 3, strip 4, all the way to strip 10. Pause the video and measure the length and enter it on your table. You can see the table here. Measure the lengths of each of these 10 strips over here. Okay, now when you do that, you need to work out a conversion factor. Now, to work out the conversion factor, I'm going to give you the actual length of the first strip. All right, write it down. The actual length of the first strip is 33.5 centimeter. Convert that to meter, it will be 0.335 meter. That's the actual length. So divide that actual length by the length you measured of this strip and that will be your conversion factor. Measure the length of each of these and multiply by the conversion factor and it is that value you enter in the paper. All right, what you enter here in this table here will be the actual value. That means the measured value multiplied by the conversion factor is what you enter here. Okay, let me, let me now show you how the first strip, I'm going to work out the first strip for you. Well, I calculate the speed of the first strip. V1 is L1 divided by 0.25, the time interval, and L1 is 0.335 meter divided by 0.25, that is 1.34 meter per second, and that's what will go in here. And you now need to calculate the speed of each of these strips, but you can confuse here because in this column, I have given you the time values 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean that the time interval for strip 2 is 0.5? No. The time interval for each of the strip is 0.25. All right. So, to calculate the speed of the second strip, it will be... V2 equal to L2 divided by 0.25 and measure that. V3 equal to L3 divided by 0.25 and so on. Now why have I given you the times here? Now this is, if you notice, this is the time for the first strip and this is the, the time, 0.5 is the time taken for the first and the second. One point, uh, 0.75 is the time taken for strip 1, 2 and 3. Is that right? But when you calculate the average speed, the time interval for each trip is 0.25. 
All right, now complete the last column. Calculate the average speed of each trip. And now, you know the definition of velocity. Velocity of a moving particle is the speed measured in a specific direction. And you know we just calculated V as delta X divided by delta T. And now let's go on and answer some of the questions. I will just read it and talk about it and I leave it for you to answer. What is the unit of velocity? Of course, you must know the unit of velocity. Is that right? Now, activity three. What is our activity three? Make a table of X versus T as follows. X versus T. X is the distance traveled. Time is, of course, the time interval. Now, I have given you the time values. Now, 0.25 is the time taken for strip 1. 0.5 is the time taken for strip 1 and 2. 0.75 is the time taken for strips 1 and 3 and so on. Tell me, therefore. What will be the distance values you will put in here? In the first column, the distance value is the length of the first trip, that is L1. How about the second? Uh, what is, what's going to be the distance there? That is the length of trip 1 plus trip 2. You see that? So, the then the distance is the length of strip 1 that length of strip 1 is traveled in a time 0.25 seconds the length of strip 1 plus strip 2 is traveled in a time of 0.5 seconds right a distance of strip 1 plus strip 2 plus strip 3 that is the third one is traveled in a time of 0.75 seconds. So the distance traveled, you will have strip one, the length of strip one, then the length of strip one plus strip two, the length of the first three strips, and what will be the last column? The length of all the ten strips. That is the total distance traveled. And what is the time taken for that total distance? It is 2.5 seconds and then what is the relation between you make a graph of this now a graph of X against T use Excel to plot a graph of X on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis tell me what is the relation between X and T Assuming that, well, I know you did not get the velocity is uniform. Assuming that the velocity is uniform, which is the average velocity for the entire trip, then I can say x equal to v average multiplied by time. Is that right? So, if I now draw a graph of x on the vertical axis, and time on the horizontal axis, I will get a straight line because this is of the form y equal to mx. And measure the slope of that graph. Well, I want you to pay special attention to measuring the slope. I'm going to show you how the slope is measured and I want you to do it exactly that way. What I have done is I have done a hypothetical graph using this data. Look at the time values. Zero, we start the origin at zero and we go in steps of 0 0.25, 0 0.5 up to 2.5. The distance values I went the scales of 0.3 up to 3 and I have these points. Now very often students think that a graph is obtained by joining the points. No. The idea of a graph is to get the trend of your experimental measurement. 
So what you will be doing is drawing a trend line. Now when I explained how to draw a graph using Excel, I showed you how to obtain the trend line. You see, a trend line may not pass through any points, but you can see the scattered points shows you a trend. This is the trend line. Now, how do we measure the slope of that? Another very misleading concept many students have, because this equation x equal to v times t is like y equal to mx. Most of the time you think the graph has to pass through the origin. Well, the graph will pass through the origin if all your measurements are perfect. But an experiment always has errors. So don't try to persuade your graph to go through the origin. You always draw the best trend line possible. All these things will be taken into consideration when I grade your lab. All right? Okay. Now, to measure the slope, again, another misconception uh, in many students. You think you need to choose two points from the experiment. No. In measuring the slope of the graph, you don't choose any experimental point. Choose two points on the graph. So, what I would suggest you do is, now choose two x values. I'm going to choose 2.25. Well, I think I'm going to choose 1.5. I'm going to choose 1.5 as one time value and 0.5 as the other time value. Now, why did I do that? Because this time interval now, delta t, is 1.5 minus 0.5, which is one second. You see, I got a convenient delta t. And now I find delta x. I draw these lines, all right, and over here. All right, what is this value here? This is supposed to be 2.1. So it is slightly below 2.1. I think that would be 2. And this is 0.6. Therefore, delta x equal to 2 minus 0.6, that will be 1.4 meter. Always write the correct unit. Delta x is 1.4 meter, delta t is 1 second, and come over here and write the slope here. Slope equal to delta x divided by delta t, which is... 1.4 meter divided by one second, which is 1.4 meter per second. That is the slope of the graph. Now tell me, what does the slope of the graph represent? Knowing our equation x equal to vt, the slope of the graph should give you the average velocity of that trolley. Is that right? Okay, so plot that graph and answer these questions. Okay, let's now look at the next question. The position of an object is given by 3t, x of t, x as a function of time, is 3t cubed minus t squared plus 2t. What is the position of the object when t equal to 0? What is x of 0? x of 0 will be 0. What is the position when x equal to 2? x equal to 2. Substitute x equal to 2 and obtain the value there. And now the next question is, what is the displacement of the object from t equal to 0 to t equal to 2. Displacement delta x will be equal to x of 2 minus x of 1, x of 0. Is that right? 
the final position minus the initial position. So you get a value here, minus zero will be the displacement. All right, what is the average velocity? The average velocity V bar is delta x divided by delta t. Delta x will be x of 2 minus x of 0. And what is delta t? Delta t will be 2 minus 0. And calculate that, and that will be the average velocity of this particle during that time. And then it says, draw a graph of x versus t and show how you will find the average velocity in this interval from t equal to 0 to t equal to 2. Tell me, how will the graph of this function look like? It is a cubic function. Do you know how the graph of a cubic function look like? Well... If I draw a rough graph from t equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, you know the graph of x cube. How many of you know the graph of x cube? Uh, that's the graph of x cube. A cubic function. We don't need this part. So our graph will look something like this. So it's going to be somewhere like that. Alright, let me draw it uh, like this. Now, this is the position when this, your x versus time. So this is the position when time equal to 2 seconds. So this will be x of 2. And this is x of 0. So, if you now draw the secant line, remember, average velocity is the slope of the secant line. If you now draw that, the slope of this line will be the average velocity. You see that? What is this distance equal to? That will be delta x equal to x of 2 minus x of 0. And the horizontal delta t equal to 2 minus 0, which is 2 seconds. So the average velocity during that interval will be x of 2 minus x of 0 divided by 2 minus 0. All right, I hope that concept is clear. Now, next I have asked you to make this table. Make a table of time and velocity. Now, when time is 0.25 seconds, the velocity will be the velocity of the first trip, that is V1. When time is 0.5 seconds, the velocity is the velocity of trip 2, that is V2. So these values are copied and pasted from the first table. When the time is 0.75 seconds, this is the velocity of the third strip. And so on, when the time is 2.25 seconds, that's the velocity of the ninth strip. And finally, the velocity of the tenth strip. And now, this is how the velocity changes with time. As time increases, how did the velocity change? Tell me, what kind of change is there for the velocity? Did the velocity increase with time? Did it decrease with time? Or did it remain a constant? Well, I wanted the velocity to remain a constant and that's why I used a fr almost frictionless track. But you see, the track is not frictionless. As a result, you see, as you cut strip 1, strip 2, strip 3, the velocity of each strip has been lower and lower. So, plot a graph of this. That is your next task. Plot a graph of velocity against time. Now, I'm expecting the velocity to remain a constant, but unfortunately it did not remain a constant, 
right? So, plot a graph of velocity against time. Use Excel. All your graphs must be done on Excel. Now, that graph you will probably get like this. You see the first velocity, the second velocity, the third velocity, fourth velocity, and so on. And Excel will give you a graph like this. I think I have gone too far out on the screen, so let me draw that over here. Well, if this is the velocity against time. Always remember to use the correct unit. Velocity meter per second and time in seconds. Now when time is 0.25 seconds, the velocity we calculated I think was 1.4. If this is 1, that will be 1.4. When the time is 0.5 seconds, you probably got a lower value and so on. You probably will get a graph like this. Now, what does that represent? This is the initial velocity V1. And this will be the final velocity V2. Is that right? Okay. What are we supposed to do now? Explain the shape of the graph. How will you explain the shape of the graph? Now, you see, I wanted the velocity to remain a constant. If the velocity remained a constant, you should have gotten a horizontal line. But, unfortunately, the velocity of our trolley decreased. All right? I've said here, you notice that the velocity of the trolley is very nearly uniform. Well, not really. So, if you want to make believe that the velocity was uniform, then your trend line will probably be like this. As many points above the line as is below. So that will be your graph if the velocity were uniform. Now, look at the next question. What is the distance traveled by the trolley in the 2.5 seconds? <coughs> All right. The distance traveled by the trolley in that 2.5 seconds will be... Anybody tell me what is the distance traveled by the trolley in that time? Well... The, the distance traveled by the trolley is actually the sum of the lengths of all the strips. Is that right? All right. Let me bring that paper over. Now, here you have all the strips. If you now add the length of strip 1 to strip 2 to strip 3 and all the way, add all these lengths, that will be the total distance traveled by the trolley during that 2.25 seconds. Now, what is the relation between... Now, let's measure the area, the area under the graph. Now, have you watched the lecture on this already? If you draw a graph of velocity against time, what does the area under the graph represent? Tell me, what does this area represent? Well, if you watch the lecture, you know the area under the velocity graph is a measure of the distance traveled or displacement. Now, if you look at this figure, let me see if I can draw that using a red now, this is the figure that I'm now looking at. Okay. Now, can you think of a geometrical formula to find the area of this shape? This is called a trapezoid. The area of a trapezoid is the sum of the parallel sides some of the parallel sides is V1 plus V2 and divide that by 2. Half the sum of the parallel sides 
multiplied by the distance across, which is actually that time, isn't it? So, it is V1 plus V2 divided by 2. Now, you know the value of V1, that is the length here, and you know the value of V2, the final velocity, in other words, the velocity of the last strip. So, V1 plus V2 divided by 2 multiplied by T. T is 2.25 seconds. That will give you the area under that graph. Now, the next question is, what is the relation between the area under this graph and the distance traveled by the trolley? Now, if you did that well, the area under this graph will be very nearly equal to the distance traveled by the trolley. All right. Comment on the statement, displacement of a particle is area under the velocity time graph. All right. And if you did not get it exactly like that, make a statement showing what do you think is the reason. You see, an experiment is an opportunity to, for you to think and reflect. So you must behave like a scientist. All right? Okay. Now, as a calculus-based physics, you know that area of a graph, under area measured under a graph, is a measure of the integral of the function whose graph is drawn here. What is the, the function, what is the name of the function whose graph is drawn here? This is the velocity graph. Velocity as a function of time. In other words, measuring the area under the velocity graph is the same as integrating the velocity function with respect to time. Integral V dt will give you the displacement function, the distance traveled. Is that right? Now, the area under the graph can be expressed as a definite integral. Suppose the velocity of the trolley, I've given you a, a simple situation. Suppose the velocity of the trolley the average velocity we got as 1.2 meter per second. Then you can actually integrate that quantity from 0 to 2.5. Is that right? If uh, the average velocity is 1.2, then the area under that graph will be integral 0 to 2.5 of 1.2 dt. Now, do you know how to evaluate this on your graphing calculator? Well, you should be able to do that without the calculator. To do this integral on the calculator, I have a TI-83. Go to math, all right, I'm going to try to enter it here. Math and go down to find finite integral. There you are. Finite integral. Enter there. And now you need to integrate 1.2. So that will be 1.2. Now integrate that with respect to time. Now on the calculator in place of time I'm going to use x. So use a comma comma x and that x changes from 0 to 2.5 so it should look like this finite integral 1.2 comma x 0 uh, comma 0 comma 2.5 remember that x stands for t there and enter and that is 3 so the distance traveled, the total distance traveled during that time is 3 meter and that was the original length of the tape that I had taken. 
Well, I have now gone through most of the important concepts of this lab. Now you answer the remaining questions. They are very important type of questions. And remember, when you answer a question, don't just give me the answer. I want to see all the steps. I have shown you in my introduction to the lab how to access and use the equation editor, the symbols and so on, so that you can construct beautifully formatted documents. I want you to use that knowledge, all right? And gain more experience. And complete the lab, write all the answers, and make it look good. And you know how, when you produce your graph on Excel, you can copy and paste it on the document where you want, all right? So do that and make the document looking very good. That, that is part of the lab. The ability to get yourself organized and produce a good document is very important. All right, let me know if you need any help. And in the meantime, uh, do all the work and upload the report before the deadline. I will see you for lab three later on.